Okay, now this next video uh, in our um, group theory course, we move into ring homomorphisms. And let us get directly into the definition of what a ring homomorphism is. We are going to see ring homomorphisms and ring isomorphisms. Okay. First, a ring homomorphism phi from a ring R to a ring S is a mapping from R to S that preserves the two ring operations. Okay, so what were the operations if we have a ring? If we have a ring we have addition and multiplication, right? So addition, uh, the set under the operation addition should be a abelian group, and under multiplication, multiplication should should be associative, right? And multiplication should be distributive. To, in order to addition, okay. So we have to, we have to preserve the two ring operations. One is the group operation. So we need uh, phi of a plus b to be phi of a plus phi of b, right? And we need. Now the other operation is multiplication, right? So we need phi of a times b to be phi of a times phi of b. Of course, this is for all a and b in uh, the ring. Okay, so this this one-to-one -one ring homomorphism if the if we have this um, if the the homomorphism is bijective meaning one to one and uh, onto if we have a ring homomorphism that is one to one and onto we call it a isomorphism So, um, these operations here, these operations here, are on the ring R, right? And this one should be on S, okay? This one on the ring R, and this one on the ring S. Of course, there is a huge difference between a homomorphism and an isomorphism. In a homomorphism, um, you have one ring here and you have another ring here and phi can be a, sim a simple homomorphism so you're simply mapping elements from one ring into the other an isomorphism it's totally different if we say that the rings R and S are isomorphic, that is different because an isomorphism is used to show that two rings are um, algebraically identical. Okay, a, homo a homomorphism is a simple mapping. Okay, so let me do some kind of a simple scheme here. Imagine you have a a ring here. It doesn't have to be this way, so it can be this way, right? And you have another ring here. So this is ring R and this is ring S. If you have elements here like A, B, and let us say here it will be A times B, okay? 
m so a times b b and a right and now you have another element that it is a plus b so this will be a plus b okay now you have a here and here you have phi of a okay you have b here and here you will have phi of b here we are okay now for instance what about a b uh, probably you're expecting that i write phi phi of a plus b as i did here for single elements but no so this one will be phi of a plus phi of b, right? So it will be this one and this one, okay? Because this is a ring homomorphism. So phi of a b, a plus b, will be equal to phi of a plus phi of b. And what about a b? Well, you know the drill. I'm not going to write phi of a b because this is a ring homomorphism. So phi of a b will be phi of a times phi of b. So this will be phi of a times phi of b. Okay, time to see some examples. Let's see example one. We take um, n what n should be, I don't know, a, a positive integer or um, yes, a, a positive integer, okay? And we take this mapping from k to k module n. Okay. Okay, so this is a ring homomorphism that is taking from the integers into Zn. Okay, so this is clearly a ring homomorphism. Okay? This is also called the, some people call this the natural, natural homomorphism, natural homomorphism from the integers to Zn. Okay, another example. For instance, if you are mapping a plus b i into a minus b i, this is a this is a ring isomorphism from complex numbers to complex numbers. You can check that. Okay, I'll give you more examples in the next video.